God. And now, through the Apostle Paul, we have received a great revelation that was kept secret from before the foundation of the world. What is that? That Jesus Christ died for our sins and that He was buried and that God raised Him from the dead for our justification. Christ died for your sins at Calvary. God made Him to become your sin at Calvary. Your sins were placed upon Him and He was judged for you. The Bible said in Romans chapter 5, verse 6 that Jesus Christ died for sinners. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, that He died for the ungodly. And it says in verse 10 that He died for the enemies of God. Imagine that. Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died for the enemies of Almighty God, for the ungodly of this world, for the sinful of this world. Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died for them. He was judged for you at Calvary. You can have peace in your heart. You can have peace with God by faith in Christ Jesus if you will receive Him as your Lord and Savior. This truth committed to the Apostle Paul is associated with a mystery that was hid in God from the foundation of the world. Turn please to 2 Timothy again. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, please notice in verse 7 again. 2 Timothy 2, verse 7. He said, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David is raised from the dead according to my gospel. All right then, in Romans 2, 16, the gospel that Paul preached, he refers to as his gospel. In Romans 16, 25, he refers to it as his gospel. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 8, he refers to it as his gospel in the name of all that's decent. Why would any preacher try to prove to you that that is not true if that preacher believed the Bible? What has he got up his sleeve, so to speak, that he wants to present to you so desperately that he would do everything he can to hide from you the truth that Paul's gospel was separate and different from Peter's gospel. Well, I imagine that the answer is in 1 Timothy chapter 6. The love for money is the root of all evil. Isn't it amazing that those to whom that gospel was committed back there in Acts 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth, they were told in Luke chapter 12 to sell out everything they had and give to the poor. They were told to be like the birds. He said the birds don't work and God feeds them. He said be like the lilies. They don't tall and God clothes them. He said, how much more are you worthy? He said, don't worry about what you're going to put on or what you're going to eat. God can take care of that, he said to them. And in Acts chapter 2, in carrying out the so-called Great Commission, the people said, what must we do? And Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. The Church of Christ preacher gets to there and runs into a roadblock. The rest of the chapter is important. You know what those people did that repented and were baptized for remission of sins? Look at it and read it and see what they did. Turn there, please. In Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, notice in verse... 41, and they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added to them about 3,000 souls, verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Church of Christ preachers never do wonders and signs. Verse 44, and all 
that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. That separates the men from the boys, don't it? People claim the doctrine of Acts chapter 2 till they get down to selling out and laying it down and having everything common and they rebel there. People claim Matthew chapter 10 when he sent the apostles out. He said, don't carry two coats nor extra shoes, on and on and on. Don't carry any silver in your purse. Pentecostal preachers all over America today claim that. They say that they have the power to lay hands on the sick and they recover. They have the power to raise the dead. They have all this power. And yet, what Pentecostal preacher do you know of today that has ever sold out everything he's got, laid at somebody's feet, gave up everything he's got, and when he goes on those evangelistic journeys, carries only one coat and he only has one pair of shoes and never carries any silver in his purse. Come on, where is he? You want to tell me about Jimmy Swaggart? You want to tell me about Jim Baker? You want to tell me about Oral Roberts? Kenneth Copeland? Come on, where are they, folks? People who are always claiming this doctrine back here never live by the doctrine that they claim. Why do they not live by it? Because they know they can't live by it in this age. God Almighty never told them to be like the birds and be like the lilies and on and on. God never told them that. He told the apostles that. He told those people at that time that. So what we mean, must we do? We must rightly divide the word of truth. We have a special apostle chosen by God from the foundation of the world. His name is Paul. And this man Paul was saved by the grace of Almighty God. Jesus Christ from his position in glory preached the gospel to Paul in Acts chapter 9. And Paul believed that gospel and said that he believed that gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, it's the gospel which I also believed, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Peter, James, and John didn't know that gospel in Acts chapter 2. They didn't know that gospel in Acts chapter 10. They didn't know that gospel until Paul preached unto them that gospel. It's the gospel of Christ, and it's called the gospel of the grace of God in this Bible, and it's committed to the apostle Paul, and God said unto you by commandment, he said, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing the gospel of Christ. Now there's a reason. Our last words today, I want you to turn with me to Philippians, and look in Philippians, Chapter 1, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 9, he said, And this I pray that your love may abound, yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, verse 10, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. You are not approving things that are more excellent unless you're rightly dividing the gospel of Paul off and you will not be without offense till the day of Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and God will save you. Thank you for listening today. Until next time, good day.